Hi, I'm the Prodigal Fish, and today we're going to talk about the Battle Sargarhi. Imagine being deployed to a land far from home. You wake up one morning at a small outpost, and you go through your daily like morning routines, until suddenly the ground starts shaking, and over the horizon, 12,000 angry horsemen are on the way to kill your comrades. This is before the internet and cell phones, so the only way to communicate a warning is by using a light reflected off a mirror. The mob gets closer, and the terrifying truth becomes apparent. They aren't going after your allies. No, they're coming to deal with you first. Now 21 men must decide if they will surrender or fight to the death with honor. That's exactly what happened on September 12th, 1897. This event had so many things leading up to it, but we're going to start in the 1600s when the British Empire first had interest in the Indian Peninsula. There's a, there's a venture called the East India Trading Company, and they start setting up shop to trade. And it was a private um, business supported by the British monarchy. Imagine if Amazon had a huge army and the full backing to do whatever it wanted. That's pretty much what it was. The company gets a foothold in 1612 after beating the Portuguese at the Battle of Swally. It's 1686 and England continues expanding until running into the predominantly Muslim Mughal Empire. In a quest to make more money, the company decides to get involved in the slave trade in 1864 because, you know, there's no other way they could have made money, right? The East India Training Company is making so much money and getting so much power, it decides it needs, it can raise its prices. They demand to sell their goods at a higher price than it was originally negotiated. The Mughals are kind of insulted and they cut off relations completely. The company is also insulted and they choose to go to war. Guess what? The East Indian Trading Company loses pretty bad because a massive Mughal fleet blockades every British port and starves them into submission in about a year. The war ends and the company pays equivalently $4.4 million worth of, I'm sorry I messed up, and they had to promise to be better next time. A century goes by and there's a constant stream of wars and mutinies against company rule until 1857 when one of the biggest ones happened. The company was able to enjoy its power and hired a bunch of Muslim and Hindi men to serve in the military, and these guys were called sepoys. The rifles used prepackaged cartridges that were wrapped in paper and had a wax tip made of animal fat that needed to be bitten off. And that's where this story gets pretty messed up. I don't know if it was some kind of sick joke or just ignorance, but the Hindis were given bullets made with cow fat, and the Muslims were given pig fat. When the sepoys found out, they got pretty angry and they went to war for a year and a half. 6,000 British subjects died, and over 800,000 Indians fell to famine, battle, and disease. The British crown loses confidence in company rule and decides to take over all the territory. Over the next 40 years, they try to establish control over the now-defeated Mughal Empire's territory. 1894, and the British military has moved into the small border village of Saragarhi. Saragarhi played an important strategic role in the British strategy to maintain order in the region. There are two massive forts, Fort Lockhart and Gulistan. And these are huge military garrisons, but they were so far from each other that neither could signal for help in case of an attack. To alleviate this fault, a small signaling post was created at the village of Saragarhi. This is before electricity, so the post used a heliograph to relay messages via light flash. A heliograph uses sunlight in a mirror to deliver a message. Morse code was invented in 1835, and they had tried to lay the wires, but the locals kept cutting the lines. 21 Sikhs were posted at the small outpost, and the base was made of an outer layer wall, an inner layer wall, and a signal tower. The garrison was commanded by Haldivar slash Sergeant Ishar Singh. He had the most experience in fighting the locals. The battle began on September 12th when 10,000 Afghan tribesmen launched their assault on the garrison. They knew that in order to sneak up on the other fort, Saragarhi had to be neutralized. Their allies attempted an attack on Fort Golestan, which ended in failure because they were warned by the Sikhs. This time, failure was not an option, and the station had to fall. It's 9 a.m., and Wave 1 ends with 60 tribal casualties and no Sikhs lost. Their enemy is going rock to rock and cover to cover as the defenders use single-shot Martini Henry rifles to take them out. Through the chaos, two tribals manage to get to the wall unseen, and they immediately start digging beneath the wall where the Sikhs can't shoot. The moment the attack began, Sepoy Gurmak Singh signals to Colonel Halton in Fort Lockhart that they've made contact with the enemy. To their dismay, Halton says that no immediate help can be sent. It takes three people to work a heliograph, one to hold the stand, one to send the message, and one to translate the message. Now that no help's coming, two Sepoys decide to go fight, but Gurmak remains behind to keep sending messages, even though he can't receive any. Back at the wall, the Sikhs are pouring it on and scoring kill after kill. 
their enemy starts lighting the bushes and shrubbery surrounding the fort on fire to create a smoke screen. Now the Sikhs have to be more selective with their targets. Meanwhile, their enemies concentrate their fire at the large wooden front door. During the attack, the leaders of the Afghan forces constantly promised that if they surrendered, no harm would come, and that riches and territory would be theirs if they just opened the door. Haldivar Singh refuses and says that that's not how Sikhs do things, and they'll have to pay the blood price to get Sarigarhi. The enemy is held at bay for three hours until noon, when the sepoy Bhagwan Singh is the first to be killed. Even though Naik Corporal Lal Singh is hurt pretty bad, he still manages to carry his fallen brother's body back inside with the help of another sepoy named Jiwa Singh. 3 p.m. and the parts where the trouble, tribal's dug collapses and the enemy pour inside. Now there's fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat and the men begin to fall on both sides. The Sikhs beat them back and they're even able to hold two waves of the attempts to breach the wall. Finally, Haldivar Ishtar Singh sees it's hopeless to hold the outer wall and he orders the remains of his men to fall back. And in an act of pure badassery, he goes out and single-handedly holds the enemy off. And he kills a whole bunch of them in the process until he's finally cut down. His sacrifice allowed the remaining men to go inside and lock the door and buy themselves some more time. Now the Sikhs are killed one by one and until a single sepoy defends the door to the signal station. Gurmak can hear his friends fighting outside and he requests permission to pick up his rifle and go fight. This whole time, the men... The British at the fort are recording this battle play by play, and Houghton says, go and fight. Gurmak can hear his friend being stabbed to death, and he tail takes the time to pack up the heliograph and return it reverently to its leather case. He then goes outside and defends the door. Gurmak single-handedly killed 40 men. The Afghans can't kill him, and they force him back inside. Rather than fight him head on, they light the building on fire. They cheer as the building burns and the trapped man coughs. But in an act of defiance, the Sikh screams out the Sikh battle cry. Bolasoni Hal, Satriya Kal, which means one will be blessed eternally who says that God is the ultimate truth. He either died of smoke inhalation or was burned. After that, the Afghans follow up in phase two and attack the fort, and two days later, British reinforcements arrive. On the 14th, the British use intense barrages of artillery to recapture Sarigarhi. By the end of this event, 4,800 men would die. 20 badly mutilated corpses are found, plus one badly burned one and there were 600 dead tribesmen in and surrounding the fort. The news was a big deal in England and India. 21 Sikhs held off an enemy force long enough for defense to be raised. Their sacrifice saved so many lives in the long run. It's amazing that every single Sikh was posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross, or the American version of the Medal of Honor. The British used the story to inspire other Sikhs to fight harder and help with recruitment. Every year, people in India and the UK celebrate Sarigar here on September 12th in honor of these men. The reason I chose this battle is because it's a last stand that's up there with the Battle of Thermopylae, where 300 Spartans held off a massive amounts of Persians. These men saved so many people, and they served a government that didn't consider them as equals. And this story really is what helped them in the long run. They were respected and considered amongst the elite. From here on, Sikhs have played a part of every major war England's been a part of. They saw action in Europe and the Middle East during World War I. They fought in the jungles, and they fought against, in Germany in World War II. Sikhs also saw combat in the Korean War and the invasion of Afghanistan and the war in Iraq. I wanted to take the time to honor these men because, unfortunately, in the United States, we aren't taught world history. So I just wanted to shine the light and so that people could know where 21 men stood against thousands. And even though they didn't win, what they did is worth remembering. Anyway, that's all I have for today. This is the Prodigal Fish, signing off. Bye.